what's going on, everybody? It's Q Jackson, host of BLK Talk. Look, I was over here preparing for another amazing episode, but look, I need you guys to go ahead and hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the notification bell so that you guys don't miss any of our amazing conversations. Have a new episode coming to you in five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> what's going on, everybody? It's Q Jackson, host of BLK Talk. And guess what? I'm back with another amazing episode, another amazing guest, and we're about to have an amazing conversation. So picture it. Uh, 2012. You know what? As a matter of fact, I'm just going to introduce him because I'm going to need some help with this story. We have one of the most talented artists I know, one of the most talented behind the scenes people that I know, one of the most creative people that I know, Mr. Najasian is here to join us today on BLK Talk because this man has a lot to talk about. What's going on? What's good, man? How are you? I, n now that we're doing this, <laughs> I am great. It's been a, it's definitely been a long time coming for sure. I think when we originally talked about this, you were a blonde. <laughs> Was I a dumb blonde? You know, you weren't <laughs> dumb. You were a creative blonde. Yeah. With gold on. We were at your listening party. Mm -hmm. 2022. That's when that was? Yeah. Why did I think that was in January? It was January of 2022. 2023. Yeah, 23. It was this year. I mm -hmm. forgot. It's okay. So that means the man has been busy. It's been That's a exactly lot going on because he forgot the exact date. However, he knows he was there. He knows I was there. So look, welcome finally to BLK Talk. We got a lot to talk about. Yes, we do. We have... 13 years worth of stuff to talk about. 11. It's 11, actually. Wow. Yes. So I met, I don't remember exactly where it was that I met him, but when we met, like, it just took off. Where did we meet? We met at, I believe it was an event that we were all at. Sounds about right. We were at an event, um, and I was seeking management. Mm -hmm. um, I had just got signed. I had just been scouted to be signed, um, and I signed... And um, I needed somebody to represent me in Atlanta, and you were the the person that so, got my name. My so name look, said. though, let me tell you guys this. So this has been the first and only person that I've ever managed in life. Wow. Um, so when I started I in the industry, I was in media, um, and I was planning events and things like that. Um, I eventually got into the brand development and the public relations side of everything. But when I met him, I'm not going to say he begged. But <laughs> you know, he was very persistent, yes, sure. and he made me believe in his product. Like he actually can sing. Like a lot of people can't do that. So I decided, hey, you know, I just got released mm -hmm. into a blessing. Most people call it being fired um, from my job, mm -hmm. and I took I took a chance. I took a chance on him because he wanted to take a chance on me. Mm -hmm. and, and we're not there for a part in age either. Uh, I, and I never knew. Right. He's the older brother, though. Um, <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll, oh, we'll, oh, we'll allow him oh, to be on this platform <laughs> once <laughs> on this good day. Okay. But 2012 was an amazing year. It um, was. It was an eye-opening year for me. But an, an well, an, an amazing year as far as like New building and connection mm -hmm. and, and doing things that we haven't done. Um, we took over the city of Atlanta That's quite often. I mean, I remember driving in my, what was it, a 90... Two Mercedes. Yeah, we was over there to grant. Like, look, all right, it's time. It's time for an event. Let's go. If they didn't know who we were, um, then they they definitely knew by the time we you know walked off the premises because we he had a lot of great things attached to his brand outside of him just being in media. You you did a lot of magazine. You were a, a publicist for real for a lot of a lot of artists that are now my friends, our friends. Um, you, you we moving and shaking. I know it, it. It was a really good year. Yeah, but. Uh, well, a lot, there is no but, but a lot did happen um, for you that year. You gained a name mm -hmm. in the industry. Yeah. Um, people were actually able to see mm -hmm. I was this visible. talented individual because <laughs> yeah. you were pretty much new here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so during that time, tell me 20, 2011, 2012, like what did you experience here in Atlanta? So I had just got signed to Capitol Records and things didn't go right with that. So I... Uh, Walked away from that situation and got signed again by X Ray Music Group um, through Universal, and um, it was a it was a crazy transition for me because I, I was already like 
feeling like mm, this ain't for me. I don't want to do this no more because like things didn't work out at Capitol. Like mm-hmm. Capitol Records. Like come on now, you know. But they wanted me to be Trey Songs and Jason Derulo, everything other than the JC. So mm-hmm. I'm just like, Ugh. so I, that that set a depression in. But like meeting you gave me visibility because I was able to be one of the hip hop. Still real housewives of Atlanta. I was I was in the mix and that was a good time. yeah, that was we, a good time we were, in Atlanta. We were literally like in the mix and it's like. I felt like at that be- that was the beginning of the JC on the brand. Like not even just who I am as a person, but I felt visible. Like when I would walk into a room, people would be like, "Who is that tall specimen of a man? Like who, what does he do? <laughs> what, what, what does he do? Who who is he?" Like it was now, like, now, who hold is on, the hold JC on, on. campaign happens. Who, hold on though. Now they <laughs> asked who he was in the beginning of the event. Yes, but by the end of the event, yeah, if there was a microphone to be passed, yeah, he was on it. Yeah. So I'm. There's one event that's that's in my head. Mm-hmm. We were somewhere off of, uh, was that Piedmont? It was a little spot. Mm-hmm. I think RL was there. The whatever was, was going on, it was a tape ended too. up on, on the, mic. the microphone. So RL, it was RL's birthday. Okay, yes. Um, and you know everybody got up there to sing Happy Birthday, and I'm like, come on, that's that's the OG, like R and B. Like, why would I not be one of the people singing to to a legend? You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And I come from a boy band, so considering. He is who he is. I was like, I'm going, I'm going to show my love to him. You know what I'm saying? And to this day, or else that's the big brother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He, he reaches out, I reach out, we check in. So it's like from that moment, we still built a rapport. Like one thing about me is like, if I meet you, we won't be connected. Like I met Dondria. That's my sister. You I know what I mean? Corey Broadway, my sister, Deanna. I met all of them through being managed by Corey Broadway is your... That's my brother. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not his sister. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, these, I'm sorry because I put a, so all of the all of these people that I met um, moving to, when I moved to Atlanta is like they're like my family now. So, so you mentioned being in a boy band. So mm-hmm. prior to moving in Atlanta, you were in the industry. You were trying to get to that level mm-hmm. of superstar of success. Yeah. So tell us when you decided that you wanted to be in the industry. Well, I'm a I'm a I'm a childhood star. I've been doing music professionally since I was like. I want to say 11, 12, um, you know, doing commercials and talent shows. I've done 70's Best American Idol. I've done Star Search. I've done all of the things that I felt like I needed to do to be a star, mm-hmm. right? Um, so there was this group happening in Philadelphia called TYM, and I was like a stalker. Like, I was blowing a manager up. Like, listen, I want the opportunity. One thing about me, if I want something, I'm going to go for it. Persistent. Yeah. There you go. So he was like, look, young boy, we already got the group. Uh, we, we ain't looking for And they lost the member. One of the members got kicked out. I said, it's my moment. So at that time, I was like, you know, a little on the chunky side and I didn't have the image that was needed. So I proved to the manager that I could lose the weight. Lost Mm -hmm. the weight. I'm going to kill myself doing it, but I made it happen. Because I was cute, but I was cute in the face and flabby in the waist and don't nobody have time. (laughs) So with that being said, you know, shout out to John Coleman for giving me the opportunity. Um, I got in the group. We did one of six in Park. She was on with the Apollo and we were winners. So I walked away. I was in 10th grade and I was a celebrity in my school because it was like wow. you were on BET three times a week and you come back to school like you wasn't just on TV yesterday. And I'm like, so I was a little celebrity. So that helped me build my confidence and things like that. Now, and did that make you cocky or confident? It was a mixture of both because I was already a pretty boy. And I already knew that I had something mm-hmm. and I was already popular for being, you know, a ladies man and stuff like that. So. That gave me like a boost, like I'm that nigga, like stop playing with me, like you know. What I'm saying? It, it, it created an aura for me in school, and then once I graduated, and you know the group disbanded or whatever like that, I had to figure out how well I was going to rebrand myself. So that's where the JCN came from, because I was Young J first. Mm. The JCN I created that whole era, and he, he, that that young man has taken me through some things. I mean, now <laughs> years later, though, still being the JCN uh-huh. and not feeling the need to rebrand the name. Because that's who I am. Like, what is the significance of or who is Najacian? Najacian is something fresh and new always because I feel like that's the energy that was created for me to even be confident. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I can't erase that. Like, rebranding my, a lot of people are like, why don't you go with your, your birth name, James? Like, I don't know who that is. Somebody gave me that name. So I created who I felt I was. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like somebody give you a name. It's like, okay, you can, you know, live up to it or not live up to it. But that's my dad's name. That's your name. I want my own identity. Mm. So, and then JCI gave me a, an ability to be something I always wanted to be. So, he he was always always a star. I just walked into it. Wow. Yeah. Now, speaking of something like that, <clears throat> a lot of people out here, and this is like completely off topic, give their 
children the name mm-hmm. that has been passed down. Yeah. You're the third, the I fourth, don't pass. you're a junior. Don't pass me down. Why? Because it's like that's that's not identity for me. Like mm-hmm. I I don't want first of all, me, I want to break generational curses. Okay. I, my parents didn't finish high school. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They didn't go to college. I did both of those things. So it's like I wanted to create something for me so that I can tell my 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 legacy what my journey was. Mm-hmm. So in the JC on this that's who I am. I'm the JC on Davis because that's what I live my life as. That's what I created and that's who I introduced myself to people probably. Mm-hmm. Be good, better, and different. Everybody knows Najee. And if you don't know, now you know. Okay. <laughs> so, 2011, 2012. Yeah. The decision was made for you to come to Atlanta. Yes. What was that conversation with the people at home that you know, that you love, that supported you? And what was that conversation with yourself? Why Atlanta was important for your career? Um. Well, I didn't really have support at home. Mm. Um, I've always been an outcast because I've always been different, you know, mm. outside of my siblings, outside of my friends. Like I've always been kind of a loner, you know, mm. kind of so to speak. So I left Atlanta on a bang. Once I got signed, it was like a big thing for everybody. Oh my God, he got signed. Who who would have thought it would have been him? So once I had the album release, the signing party and all that, I left on that high. So it's like I didn't mm. have a plan. I just got up and left. When I came to Atlanta, I came to Atlanta with a, a purpose to say, you know what? They're going to see me on TV. They yeah. going Like that was the energy. So to this day, people respect me because I, I just went with my gut. I didn't I, I didn't come here like, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. I just was like, yo, I got to capitalize off of this. That's how I met Kiki Wyatt, you know, TC. Like, mm-hmm. I met all of the all of the people that I wanted to be around. Like I, it's like I manifested that yeah. energy. It wasn't, it wasn't like a stalker energy. It was like, I bring something to the table, too. So it's yeah. like, I don't want to be around you because of what you do. I want us to be around each other because we can kind of coexist. Yeah. Okay? But it, it, could, it could come off that way. But when people got to know me, I'm like, yo, he he's actually dope. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I had to prove myself. So coming to Atlanta was definitely um, t- self-worth to show who I am, what I can do, what I can bring, and how I could be of service to other people too. You know what I mean? So you came to Atlanta um, as an artist that <clears throat> had a deal. Yes. Things didn't necessarily work out. You transitioned into another one. Yes. So tell us about that process of feeling like, like you're on top of the world because Capitol Records, as yeah. you guys know, is you know a pretty big thing to... You know, being at that low and then being picked back up mm-hmm. because of the new signing. Yeah, I I just wanted to. I didn't want people to know I didn't. I had I had a deal no more. Mm. So for me, I worked diligently to find another situation because mm. I already had the music, I already had the the image and everything that was needed for me to even be believable. You know mm. what I mean? I had good good quality videos and stuff already and stuff like that. So it was like I need to find a team here in Atlanta. Like that was my goal. My goal yeah. was to find a team and I didn't I wasn't only here for like probably a month before I met you mm-hmm. like I was like I'm not about to be out here just winging it like I need a team and I was very serious about that that journey to get there intentional yes intentional and, I, and <clears throat> persistent yes and and I got it and I was at every I was on every red carpet I was at every show I, I'm talking about performing in Macy's I was performing um, I, in all Atlanta was an experience for me and it created who I am today. Wow. <laughs> so 10 years later, do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? Yeah. The JC on management. This man got me a shirt. It is so very comfortable. Okay. Unfortunately, <laughs> neither I one can't of us fit that anymore. Can, neither one of us can fit that shirt. Cheers to eating good. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I've been the whole person since then. <laughs> You know, but we're we, we okay. we gonna get back yeah, into we that. Yeah, we're not okay. gonna get back into that shirt in particular. We're gonna just get back into that. Now, for this okay. phase in your life mm-hmm. to be able to present this mm-hmm. to somebody, um, to be able to still, you know, believe in yourself enough to support yourself. Uh huh. Then that be, that artist became a manager. So, in the E management, the JCI Vision Entertainment Management, um, I'm still a face of my brain. Still, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, and a lot of people was like, why did you transition from artistry to management? Is because I want to give to my artists what I want to give to me. Right. Um, without all of the, I can't even call it bells and whistles because it wasn't no bells and whistles. It was fucking heartache and pain and <laughs> trauma and confusion and depression and, and, and anxiety. So, <laughs> so okay. Now, 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 let's get into that. Okay. So, I had to say where you went. You got here. You were on a high. Mm-hmm. Um, you were 
out at these events, you were making connections, you were doing things, you were recording. Um, but then it got to a place for you where things, all the glitz and the glamour and the shine became real. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't what you thought it was. It got dark. What so I tell us about those dark moments. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. All right. So we gonna... should have we should have did that in the beginning. See, right. <laughs> we know we know about these. It's things. okay. The JCI Vision Entertainment is always booked and busy. So I understand. That was one of my clients called me. Ka Shout out to Kayla Infinity. <laughs> big pressure. But no, um, they got say dark. big pressure. Yeah, we, I call it big pressure. Oh, pressure. Big pressure. I thought you said big pressures. No, big pressure. Pressures. Um, I got rid. I, I got um. I got rid of the artistry part for a time mm -hmm. to become a manager because I want. Like I said, I wanted to give my artists what I didn't have. And being in Atlanta in that time for me as an artist, it got dark being in the industry because it wasn't. What I thought. Mm -hmm. um, all of the things I heard, the horror stories I heard, I began to experience. Mm -hmm. um, the propositioning, the sexual favors, the promises that were broken, mm -hmm. the um, I, I, I got you, just give me a minute. I'm in my mind like, I, I, I'm not a priority, I felt. Um, and even when it, even with the label, you being my manager, it began, it began to be hard for you to do your job because I wasn't transparent anymore. I got and it. just to let y'all know, I was not the one sexually proper. No, 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 I would not be sitting here. Okay. <laughs> but no, I'm saying like it, me being closed didn't allow you to do and protect me the way that you wanted to, because I was in a certain place. Yeah. And, um, it was, it, 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 oh, it stemmed from my family too. Like mm -hmm. I come from that. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's like the, the, the molestation, the, the, the prostitution, the, the poverty. I come from all of that. So mm -hmm. it's like for me, it's like I felt like going into the industry was going to save me from what I already was dealing with. And then to get and, back to, and, and experience. And it's and like, damn, back. over here too? And it was worse over here because it's like I wanted something from over here. Mm -hmm. And it was like in order for me to get from what was over here, here's what I need you to do. And I'm like, no, because a lot of people, to be honest, I would have been successful and famous already had I would have done and been the way that people wanted me to be now and i chose not to so i'm i'm struggling to get there but i'm struggling to get there because i chose to do it the right way now with that being said you said because <clears throat> of the experiences that you had mm -hmm. um you decided decided to transition to a position where you can create help narrative. create artists but protect them that's yes. a big thing you mm -hmm. protected people um in, in a way that you were not protected right um so it's like course, me showing what i wanted so, of yeah. course, that comes with, like, a lot of communication. And, mm -hmm. you know, since you started, you've done some amazing things with yes. artists. Like, guys, if you remember Reese a couple weeks ago, R Reese for show. <laughs> Reese for show. Um, <laughs> you know, recently released his holiday music. You know, he was on it. This is one of his artists. Yes. As a matter of fact, earlier this year, that was another group that Reese was actually a part Zen of. Zen City. Those were his artists. And it's crazy because, not to cut you off, but Zen City was created at a time where I was, like, at my... Lowest because mm -hmm. I had moved to Atlanta again, mm -hmm. but this time as a manager. Yeah. Um. But I, one thing about me, I always try to. I always remember me. Like mm -hmm. I'll throw out an album every now and then, or a song, or I'll go do some acting stuff. Yeah. I'll go do you know because I'm still a creative and talent too, and I didn't want to lose sight of that. So having my artists, they kind, they kind of, they kind of believe in me too. They be like, they be telling me like, Yo, Jay, when you want to put something out, when yeah. you want, I'm in my mind like, Yo, 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 my music a little bit, okay? <laughs> like I'm a vibe to them too. So yeah. it's like. It's, and I'm very selective on who I decide to manage as well. Yeah. Like, I'm very particular because I don't believe in managing something that's not manageable. And a lot of the artists that I have, I've had for 10 years. Like, Milo, I've had him since he was 16. He's now 26. Wow. Um, uh, Devontae, who was in Zen City, was in the group with Milo when I first put the boy group together, Pandemonia, in 2015. So it's like, all, and Kayla, my artist, I've had her since 2016. So it's like, I, I, I work with the same people and then uh Reese I've had him for a year but he came in and fell right in line like and is doing some amazing things in a short amount of time mm -hmm. I, but, that, but that's because the journey I took get, can get it there fast yeah like it's like getting him a deal in a year and he wasn't even an artist prior says yeah. a lot about my movement and his gift yeah and our gift that God gave us together because it's not a me thing it's my my journey my skill set matching his ability for people to see that he's talented, but I'm able to get him endorsed. He probably wouldn't have got into mm -hmm. this soon. Yeah. So, so let me see. 20, was it 2013, 2014? Mm -hmm. You moved away.
away from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, and I hadn't seen you, like, of course, via social media, I saw mm -hmm. you were, um, you had your podcast, you were doing um, plays. Mm -hmm. You, like, you were creating, like, this man's, like, <laughs> top period. Like, he's that's my everything. Idol. That's my, that's he my is creation. writing. He is producing. Mm -hmm. He is acting. Like, he is doing everything. But the next time I saw you after you left Atlanta, and I tell you, it was the best welcome, the, the, the re, re some, some. <laughs> the resurgence. Yeah, the best me seeing you again that I've ever seen in a while. Do you remember where it was? It was at L.A. Reed's, um 2018. Yeah. It was 2018. My artist, my boy, Atlanta. Group that I put Project. together in 2015. Project 25 got signed yes. to L.A. Reed's Hicko. Yep. Yep, I remember that. And, and it was I crazy you it. seeing me in that light. Like, yep. you and saw a, me exactly, in, like, in a completely yeah. different light. Because like, I had were, I was, I was, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Mm -hmm. So, when you decided to move away from Atlanta, we're going to mm -hmm. rewind a little bit. Mm -hmm. When you decided to move away from Atlanta, what was that thought process like for you? Where were you mentally during that time? Well, I didn't necessarily decide to move from Atlanta. What happened was, I was going back and forth filming a TV show, mm -hmm. a web series called Choices. And... That's where I met my wife. Mm. She was the executive producer and makeup artist on set. So it was just like I, I connected to somebody that I, I started falling for and, you know, bobbing with. And it was like, I'm going back to Atlanta for what? And by mm -hmm. that time, the deal was over. Me and X-Ray were not in the, in the same space creatively. And I didn't have I didn't have the support that I used to have. So it was like, what, what am I in Atlanta for? I had already did what I thought I wanted to do here. I wasn't really in artistry mode anymore and I needed something else. So acting was always my first love. Mm -hmm. So I went back to that and it was like, it's a, it's not saturated. Like this music industry is super saturated. So I was like, I'm going to go somewhere where I know I, I can shine. And mm -hmm. So that's when I went back to um to Philly and I stayed. <laughs> I just stayed in Philly and then that's when I started to create and go back to my first love, which is how I got in the industry to begin with as a boy band. So I said, I want to create my own. Yeah. And that's how my career started to take off. And I was confused. I'm like, I, this is what I wanted to do. But I got God has a mysterious way of working. He said, I want you to, I want you to do it this way. Mm -hmm. You already got the tools. You may not be able to do it for yourself because it's not, this is not what I want you to do. But I want you to step back and give back. And that's what I did. Now, when it comes to something like that, when you know that the gift that you have mm -hmm. is not only for you, Mm -hmm. but is meant to help take somebody else to another level. Yeah. How does that feel like? What is that What is that weight on your show? It was like? it was a little confusion, confusing for me. I had questions. I, I talked to God. I'm like, whoa, like, like what's going on? You know what I'm saying? But I had to realize that the position I'm in now is going to position me for life mm -hmm. because I'm my own boss. Yeah. I don't have to answer to anybody. I literally make my money. And I, if I want to put out an album, I can. I can finance it myself. I can mm -hmm. get it marketed myself. So it's like... It's like God giving me what I want, but in the way that it makes sense for me. Because I may not be everybody's favorite. Mm -hmm. I may not be the artist that's going to sell out arenas. But however, I that little boy in me always wanted to be the star or a star. But I'm a star in a certain kind of way because I'm giving back. I'm opening up doors for other people to shine because when they shine, I shine. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's like artists for artists. Like that's a movement. So it's like I'm not looking at myself as this big executive. I'm an artist who has the ability to give other artists opportunity, but it still reflects me because it's my gift shining through their gift. Mm, okay. Now, okay. When you moved back, mm -hmm. you were speaking of the executive producer Come on. slash makeup Come artist on. who is now his lovely wife. Uh -huh. Shout out to Mrs. Davis. Okay. Um, during that time, you know, I'm pretty sure you were going through a lot of dark moments, and you were trying to get out of those. Yeah, I was dead. So Literally. tell us <laughs> ab about that and how love, mm -hmm. um, how purpose, mm -hmm. how those help to bring you out of those dark moments? I mean, I still I still have my moments, you know what I'm saying, as a human, because now I have to take care of somebody mm -hmm. outside of myself. And when I met my wife, I, st I was in that dark space trying to figure out what that was. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's, it, it has its... Uh, let me just say, you need, the prayer has to continue to happen. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a fight every day because sometimes I feel like giving up, like, I, I can't do this marriage no more. I don't want to manage these arts no more. I don't even want to be here no more. Like, I, I have all of those experiences, but I'm not afraid to express them. Yeah. Um, I've always been clear about my feelings. You can call it sensitive, whatever, but I, a lot of men are not able to express themselves effectively. Vulnerability. Vulnerability. Yes. I'm that as fine as because I feel like the only way you're going to get to know me and, and understand me is if you know the truth about mm -hmm. what I'm feeling. And mm -hmm. if, I, if you can't, you don't need to come up with your own you know, perception. I'm telling you what it is. You know what I'm saying? So um, it, it, it gets heavy. It gets heavy. And you need to have 
people that that you can trust mm-hmm. and that you love there to kind of like weigh it out with you and that that spiritual connection to whoever you you praise or whatever. But you just have to have that because when I first moved here, again, I was I moved here in uh, February. My wife didn't move here in some May because mm-hmm. I came out here. I got a job. Shout out to Travis Malloy. Um, got me a job out here because I called him. I'm like, that's one of my close friends. I'm like, bro, I'm I can't do this infinitely no more. Like, I need to do something else. He was like, you, are you serious about it? He's like, I mean, I'm gonna get a job. So I became concierge at the uh, Metropo- Metropolitan um, Hotel on Peachtree. Okay. Um, overnight working overnight, and um, in that process, I created another group called No Ego. Um, that didn't go and brought in you know Raz B. I was working with Raz B with their project and stuff like that. So that didn't really go well, and I found myself like, oh my god, here we go again. And it's like every time I start something and I invite a lot of people to be a part of it, it doesn't go as I see it because mm. everybody wants the position I have. Everybody and I had to realize input. now every every all of a sudden everybody wants to create groups. And I'm like, well, why didn't you create one prior? Because I, the gift was given to me. You sparked <laughs> you sparked something in them. I guess that's what you go. But I mean, but that's thing, that, people that, like to bite off the vision. I'm but just listen, saying. I'm trying to tell you when when a person gives you a piece of the vision. Take the piece that was given to you. You can't take mine because I was a part of the foundation of the vision. So you so, snatch me from the But the thing is, is if it was a vision that mm-hmm. was given to you, mm-hmm. no matter what part of it they take, if it was not a vision for them, it's not going to work. But it, but it, go, it goes back to foundation. When you, it's like a rug. If I snatch this rug up, it's not going to be the same layout. Mm-hmm. So I'm the foundation. So anything that God gives me, so when you snatch me from it or I'm removed from it, it's either going to sink or swim. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Didn't I just say that? Didn't he just yeah, reiterate? Just reported, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I keep telling, trying to t- 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 tell people that I'm special, and I'm and I'm learning that more. And I'm 34 now, so I'm learning more and more that the gifts that are given to me are really like handcrafted, designed for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And people be wanting it so bad. They're like, "Oh, yeah, how you do this? How you do that? Don't worry about it. Do what you do and do it at your best, because mm-hmm. that's what I'm going through. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So throughout the conversation, you've thrown some, you know, pretty notable names out in mm-hmm. the industry. Yeah. And you know, most people when you know you name drop it and, and people feels like that's a bragging, boastful thing. But mm-hmm. for you, being who you are and where you are, why is it important to share um with people like some of the people that you've worked with, some of the people that you've met throughout your journey in the industry? I think it's important because a lot of people can can only see them in one way. Mm-hmm. And for me, me knowing these people personally and experiencing them like a lot of people see Travis Malloy, so to speak, and, and see millions, billions, and trillions and see mm-hmm. the brand. But he's an amazing person because he took he took time out of his busy life to make sure that my life got better. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. Because he, he saw the dark space I was in. Wow. And he said, you know what? Let me shine some of my light. I'm not there. But I, I know what that feels like. Mm. I know what my journey was. And I, and I wish I had somebody to pull me out. Mm-hmm. So t- 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 for him, for that, he will always get my, my love and gratitude because... He's not only a friend, but he's a brother, but he actually saved my life because I called him talking suicide. Like, bro, I'm, I don't want to be here no more. And he was like, we're not even about to have that conversation. What you need? And let me stay with him rent free mm. until I got on my feet. And now I have a four bedroom house, three beds. Mm. So for me, I, I believe in giving people their tokens because a lot of people who have not had that experience with those people will be able to hear it because I'm speaking about it. And a lot, we need to do more of that. A lot of people just look at people as a brand and say, okay, oh, he got dope music or he's a great songwriter. No, he's an amazing person. person. Outside of his gifts and creative, he's an amazing person. And do you think that helps other people, like the people that are watching or the people who may listen to your music? Mm-hmm. Um, they see you as an artist, but a lot of people don't necessarily see people as as a person. person. <laughs> yeah. Right. So do you help think that that helps other people feel inspired and it encourages them? Absolutely. To- Absolutely. It, it, it makes you evaluate the people you have around you because mm-hmm. if you've got people around you that are not going to pull you up when you're down or don't even try. It just says a lot about who you are and who they are because it's like, what, what, are, we, what are we bouncing back mm-hmm. and forth? What, what's the energy? What, yeah. are, are our frequencies the same? What, what is your, why are you existing in my space mm-hmm. if you're not going to, you know, shake the table with you? Yeah. Like we, need, <laughs> we need some help here. Yeah. And I just feel like having people... Like, you know, Raz B, Travis Malloy, Aaron Thomas. That's another one of my friends. We grew up together in high school. Whenever I need him, he's there for me. Whether it's I need a song recorded, mm-hmm. a photo shoot, he he understands the grind because we, we started together. So, like, I always give homage to people like that because I know their story and they know mine. 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I want the world to know that when you see people together, even if you see them apart, know that this industry is very small. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm just grateful for my position in it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm doing what I love. I never thought I would love entertainment in this way. Um, but I'm doing what I love. And like I said, even with my little shortcomings and the suicidal thoughts and the feeling like giving up, I still find ground to come back because I have, mm. I have a spiritual connection with God. And I understand that my human self will always fall short. Mm. But my spiritual self is going to stay strong because I'm still connected. So, yeah. Now, you've been behind the scenes. You've mm-hmm. been in front of the, the camera. You've uh-huh. been in every aspect Up in of the, the industry. Yep. What is your favorite part? Honestly, bro... I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I I get a thrill out of being um, an executive and a manager because it's like watching what we create and mm-hmm. being in the studio and sh- on video shoots. And I'm I, I literally my artists will tell you I cry when we when they shoot their first vid- videos mm-hmm. on a certain level. Like when Milo just got his deal with Black Brown, I was just looking at him again. Now, granted, he was signed to LA Reed before, but it's something that, something about seeing him by himself. Yeah, that kind of threw. I'm like, why we did it again? Yeah, and this time you're shining in this way. Same thing with Kayla. Same thing with Reese. And same thing with Too Unique. So it's like watching my artists do what they do. And I'm sitting there watching. I'm like, wow, not only did we do this, but I, I carried it. Like, mm-hmm. I, just, I literally was obedient to the movement. And now we're here. You know what I mean? And it's a, it's a beautiful feeling. I love acting, too, though. Like, that's mm-hmm. my favorite thing. So I, I got to get this plug real quick. I got a lot of projects out right now. You can catch me as an um, a extra. And, um, oh, man, it's a lot, a lot of stuff going on. So I have a... I have a show out right that's coming out January tenth. It's called Miss Pat Settles It. Um, oh it's, yes, yes, it's, it's uh, a court comedian Miss Pat. So on yeah. BT, uh, BT plus. No, it's, it's on BT. BT. It's on actual. Oh okay. So it, January tenth at ten p.m. So make sure y'all tune in today because I'm. I'm, I'm Are we having a watch party? I want to. I, I want to have a watch party. Um, What's up? What what day of the week is that? Uh, Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. Damn, what what is it with you and Wednesday? No, that's the network. I don't have nothing to do with that. I, I don't know. <laughs> it seems like all your stuff end up lining up on Wednesday. Speaking of Wednesdays, mm-hmm. and speaking of some of the things that you have going on, there has been a series, yes, a music series mm-hmm. that you've been producing. Um, how did that come about? And tell us about it. So I have a movement that I've been wanting to do for years, the Nijian Experience. I wanted to kind of create a movement where you know, I bring in talent that I feel deserves a platform. Yeah. platform. So I named it the Najeeciana Friends Concert Series. Um, I started it off with calling it the Najeeciana Experience, but it's not just me. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, how can I, you know, be branding wise? How can I make it make sense? So Najeeciana Friends. So I, I scout talent or people I already know and people that I see on social media, like, I think you're dope. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody doesn't get an opportunity to perform on platforms or get shows or get booked. So I'm like, you know what? If I think you're dope, I want you on my stage type thing. And that's that, that's pretty much what I wanted people to do for me. Yeah. So I'm create I'm literally recreating what I always wanted, but my way, my movement, creating my own table so, so I can sit at the throne and you know we don't need to wait on everybody else. Tyler way. Perry told me that create make your create your own table. Have you watched his documentary? Did I cry? Yes, absolutely. So he's watched it. If you guys have not watched I, it, I was watching make myself. Make sure you guys <laughs> watch that. Maxine's baby, Amazon Prime. Because you went you. and didn't invite me, remember? Yeah. Um, we're not going to get into that. Uh, he, he went to the viewing and didn't invite me. Yo. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I watched know you had a plus there one. And I know you had a plus one. No, I actually did. All right, well, we're going to let you That say. night, I didn't. And I didn't work it as media. I came in, mm-hmm. did what I did, and I skipped out. Yeah, Tyler Perry is one of my biggest inspirations. And um, working with him, I did the have and have nots. And just being able to see him. And that's also something I did when I when I moved down here mm. the first time. So I did a lot of extra work and stuff like that. Um, just getting just just so getting has, my chops. Yes, credit. Oh yeah. So I am I am BD. It's definitely loading and lit. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm 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 really doing everything I want to do. I'm just I'm excited about where I'm going. I'm in the right alignment. I feel I have the right people around me because I was able to orchestrate this time. Yeah. Um. But you had to. Do you feel like? Everything that you've gone through, you had to go through. Absolutely, because I'm sitting here strong as shit. <laughs> like I just feel like I was so vulnerable and weak and um, misguided before. Um, that 22, 24 year old, mm-hmm. I just wanted to be a star, and wanting to be a star, not understanding what that meant, is what made things rocky. Because I just wanted to be a star. Mm-hmm. So at any opportunity, like how do I get there? Nah, you have to really, really be poised. But again, not having the support system to kind of shape that. 
I, I fell victim to a lot of stuff. Mm. But now, it shaped me to be stronger to know that I, my, my talent is enough. Mm. And you will not get this dick. <laughs> okay? Can I, say that? Can I say that on here? Um, I'm just being honest. I know, like, know how YouTube is. But... <laughs> Listen, I'm just being honest because I, need, I, I want people to understand that your talent is enough. And if they yeah. want more than your talent in order for you to be successful or shine, then that's not the situation for you. All right. And that's what I had to learn because... I was I just kept bumping into the same things. I'm like, y'all said y'all wanted somebody that knew how to sing, but the person on stage said on ass. So did they <laughs> did they get their knees dirty too? Or did they did they break their back too? Well, I mean like, it's, I just a, to know. it's a lot being revealed in this industry. I just need to know um, over the past couple Man. weeks. And I mean, we we we're not gonna get too we're deep not, into because that. I can I can confirm because <laughs> we don't want the people coming after us. Listen, but you know when, when, people talk, <laughs> when people talk, when people <laughs> talk, when people talk, talk when, <laughs> when people talk, get a little lynch on my cut the thing off. What do we say when people talk? Let them talk. There you go. Okay. Speaking of, <laughs> <laughs> same way. Come on, let <laughs> Man, so there's a new project uh -huh. that you have created. You've been working on it. For a while, mm -hmm. and you finally felt like it was time. This was your birthday gift to yourself. Yeah, tell us about your new project. So I have a new project called Let Him Talk. Um, that I kind of put out on my birthday because it actually was supposed to come out in January. But see, what had happened was me, life, life, and me being a manager. I, that's that takes precedence over everything. Mm -hmm. My 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 clients or whatever. I do what I do when I have the time. To right. Work. Um. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to let these songs go to waste. I pay too much money and too much studio time. <laughs> yeah. So I said, you know what? I'm going to put it out for my birthday. And I started doing that when I turned 30. So when I turned 30, I put out a project called 30. Then uh, when I turned 32, I put out a project called Full Circle, Full Circle because it just was a lot happening at that time. And then Let Them Talk. And I put out Let Them Talk because I'm tired of people talking shit. And that the, <laughs> and the first song is actually the title track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you, I was driving to work. Listening you loved to it, it at the, the listening party. Too. I did. Mm -hmm. And it gave me chills like I heard it for the first time. And this was, what, a week ago? Yeah. You released it. Um, and that song speaks volumes for you and the things that you've experienced. And you, could, and you know it my story. It speaks yeah. volumes for people who have experienced things. So, mm -hmm. for people who haven't listened to the song yet, tell them about Let Them Talk. Let Them Talk is pretty much me talking my shit for real. Let people know I don't give a... Uh, yes. Uh, uh, F-U-Q. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, not CK with you. Um, I don't care. Like I'm at a place in my life where I'm super, super confident, and I don't care. Mm -hmm. And I don't care about what people say. Like I put, I put a post up. Um, I want to say, um, probably like in the last year about my experience with everything, and it was my. It, I'm tired of people trying to hurt me with what already hurt me. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So it's like, okay, I need to take and share the narrative. Yeah. Let me tell you my truth, yes. and whatever you do with it from there, that's on you. I don't care. So I had to release that for myself because I, I don't want people to have, be able to hold nothing over your head. I got tired of um, working with artists who use me and th think the grass was greener on the other side. I just been through a lot of stuff in the industry on both sides. And I just said, you know what? I'm at a point right now where I don't care. I'm just going to do it my way and whoever is attached to me that's supposed to be attached to me, they're going to they remain loyal. They're going to rock in and who not. Go ahead. So whatever y'all want to say, y'all going to say it. Go ahead, let them talk. Cause I'm I'm going to keep it moving regardless. Like one thing about me is that this don't work. I'm going to try something else. Mm -hmm. I've never been a person that sat around and was just like, oh, you know, I'm going to figure it out. Like your resume is impeccable. I mean, yeah. you got artists, you got management, you have producer, yeah. you have actor, you yeah. have. I mean, clearly mm -hmm. that's the truth. Now let's 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 get back to let them talk. Uh -huh. So we're inspired, we're encouraged, mm -hmm. we we getting it all out. And then we go to every other song. <laughs> now there's Baby Making Music. Let's talk about and it. And there's F-U-Q apostrophe N uh -huh. music. Uh -huh. I had to listen to some gospel after this. Make sure we get that shirt made, though. And I need my 10%. The F-U-Q um, apostrophe, apostrophe N. N. Fucking is going to be good. You heard it here first. Yeah, we're going to we get that merch, merch out to y'all. That's, like, that's a collab between the JC and the I mean, they back together again. Uh -huh. In a different way, but we working. Executive standpoint. Let's go. <laughs> right. <laughs> but no, go ahead. But you have this fucking music uh -huh. that is going on. Like, when I tell you this music is... <laughs> it it made you want to order some stuff, huh? <laughs> It's raunchy, 
But it's good though. Right, yes. Like people appreciated baby making music mm -hmm. in the nineties. A lot of you nineties babies, two thousands babies, Thank you me. guys were here because of that. A lot of pandemic babies were here because of we ain't had nothing to do. But Listen. now your music is about to be responsible for not just a normal sex life. Like your music gives people It gives the, you an adjacent because I'm a very very, very sexual person. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that ain't what I was going to say. I know, but that's, but that's the inspiration yes. behind. The, but, the, like, it allows people to live out those fantasies, mm -hmm. I guess. Because, you know, back in the day, mom and daddy and grandma and them, you know, they was doing regular humping. It was what it was. We mm -hmm. going to hump. I'm going to get up. I'm going to make you a sandwich. I'm and make it you is a what sandwich it is. is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but now, you know, people are more free mm -hmm. in their... In their you know, and their their sexual exploits, mm -hmm. and this album is a reflection of that. Yeah. So, what is your favorite song on there? It depends on the mood for me, honestly. Like, I love I love drowning. Drowning is uh, really melodic. I'm and thinking I, we about to listen to something about rivers and and oceans. Yeah, we, we, it was rivers and oceans. Real guy. Okay. Um, <laughs> but then I was listening. I said, oh. How you doing know today? Yeah. <laughs> So, Drown is one of my favorite because it's like it's really melodic. It's really short. I actually wanted to make that the intro track mm -hmm. because of, it, of how short it is. But um, that's one of my favorites. And I also love, um, I love Body, but I, I changed the name to Call Me. Mm -hmm. um, it's featuring some amazing artists on there as well. Um, I love Let Them Talk. And I love VVs. VVs is my favorite. Now, now, let me tell you about that. Now, if you can remember, I when I came to the listening party, I mm -hmm. brought my friend G. Shout out to King G. He uh -huh. was probably episode 13. Mm -hmm. um, but I brought him. And every time we have a conversation about you, mm -hmm. th this is his little... Hold up. I'm trying to do the little dance. <laughs> he, he got a little, a little leg shake. Mm -hmm. And he loves the F. Out of that song, so which one? You, VVs. Oh yeah, that's what that's when you sent me that link. Yeah, I had to go ahead and send that to him immediately. Yeah. Let's start your day with, with some VVs. good music. Yeah. Um, but for you, why are those like <clears throat> your top songs? Right? So VVs is a record kind of like reminiscent of strip club music. Strip club music, but I had a couple years ago when I was living here, I put out a record called "We're Gonna Turn It Up," and it's kind of like similar to that. That was actually the last record and video I did with X Ray. Shout mm. out X Ray. Shout out um, to Officer X-Ray. Yeah. Hello? <laughs> Come on, career change. <laughs> to protect and serve. <laughs> Hello? So, yeah, put the, put that out. So, so VVs was, like, reminiscent of that. I wanted to give people... People were so used to me being the balladeer or the person that's just singing. I wanted to challenge myself to just vibe and have mm -hmm. a good time. So, VVs, shout out to Mark Love. He pinned that thing. I told him I wanted something up-tempo, something, you know, fun in strip club. I wanted to see some ass or whatever the case may be. <laughs> um, and that's what had happened was. Now, what... <laughs> What had happened was. What, happened was. <laughs> what about um, some of the other songs on the album? Like the significance of those for you? Are there deeper meanings to some of those songs? So it, this album really wasn't like deep. And that's the why first I, song. That, well, I'm about to tell you. I'm about to tell you. That's why I let let them talk because I let them talk was like I don't give a fuck. So the rest of the songs is I don't give a fuck. I'm just having a good time. I'm just living. Mm. That was like it was double meaning to, yeah. to the to the. But let them talk had its own meaning. But the tone of the project had its own meaning too. It's like I don't care. I'm ready to I'm ready to live and be free and and do what I do. That's what it is. Because full circle, if you listen to full circle, you would see it's more loving. It's mm. more it's more records that are like vocal. Mm. Like this, I, I went in the studio had a good time. Like I promise you, I did. There's a record on there called Alma. I'm going to eat that with you. I'm going to eat that Like, people was like, Jay. <laughs> now, Listen. I just imagine listening to an album like that before you go to a clinic where you're testing people for HIV and Listen. AIDS and STD. Well, they should they should have been... We should be playing your album in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> so, as an artist, though, mm -hmm. as a manager, as I'm a I'm literally creative, an artist manager, literally. Like. <laughs> as, as the everything that you are, how mm -hmm. does it feel with this project to release things that, you know, mean a lot to you with the Let Them Talk, but then releasing the rest of the songs that, you know, just show who you are and how, what other people say to you mm -hmm. doesn't really affect you like it used to be. It's a, it's, it's a beautiful feeling to know that I'm at a, I, 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 I don't care standpoint in mm -hmm. my life because it's like, I cared so much once upon a time, mm -hmm. how people view me, what, what people thought of me. And it was like, 
if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I was always an amazing person. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Even when I heard horror stories about myself that didn't even that didn't even connect to who I really am, it was just like, you know what? Stand firm. Ten mm-hmm. souls. Like, be who you are. The people that are supposed to be for you are going to connect anyway. The people who want to contrive and make up things yeah. to have other people run away from you, they already see your gift. Yeah. So they're trying to tarnish it. And if you let them by crying and sobbing, like, oh my God, what's... But no, I'm, I know who I am, so I don't care what you're talking about. I, when I wake up, I'm in the JC. I want to go see the JC. So whatever you feel, if we didn't connect, a lot of people like, how come my story with him ain't the same as your story? Because what did you do to me? You get what you get. Oh, and I'm going to just do it better. That's, oh. that's what people don't understand about me. Like, if somebody did something wrong to me, it's not about tick for tech, but I'm going to show you what it is. Mm-hmm. And people and other people be like, oh, he's such an, a big heart, amazing person. And then they be like, oh, I heard he did it. I'm in my mind, like, ask them what they did to me. Mm. And Everybody that, always wants to tell what you man, did to them, but they never want to accept people, accountability what I, what for I their role. What I learned, you is that people will try to get you before you get them, not knowing that's not even on your mind. Wow. I'm not even think, I'm not out here to get nobody, but people wow. have found it in their in their life to say, you know what, let's 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 do this to get the JC or let's backstab them, let's hurt them. And I mean my mind like I must be really good because why do you wake up trying to figure out a way to destroy me? Wow. You feel what I'm saying? And it hurts, but it's like I'm not giving you that no more. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna see that you hurt me. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna elevate every time while you sitting here trying to figure out how to break me down, these bricks is getting stronger. Like, I ain't got time. Now, from everything that you've experienced... <clears throat> you trying to make me cry. That's what you I'm getting. I'm getting feeling that. You've gained a strength that you did not have before. Now, I know you didn't do it by yourself. Because mm-hmm. we never... Do it by ourselves. Heal by ourselves. It's a fact. Have you gone to therapy? Wow. A friend of mine's literally just asked me that yesterday. Have you been to therapy? And I said, no. And it's crazy because... I recommend therapy just in general. I feel like everything that I went through, I can talk about and I can talk about it and I didn't go to therapy. Mm-hmm. That's because I allowed myself. Self-healing is not it's not a bad thing when you allow it to happen. Yeah. I feel like people who go to therapy is because they need something else. I All, all I needed was me because it was never nothing wrong. I allowed things to happen. The journey that I went through, I feel like God literally wanted me to go through so I can sit here and talk to you about it the way that I am. Because talking to you about this before, I, I would be crying. I would be emotional. But I can't cry about things that I've got through. Mm-hmm. I went through it. You know what I'm saying? And I recommend people go, th- go to therapy if they can't trust their self-medicine. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's where my issue yeah. was. Because I started therapy probably three to I four am years therapy. or something. Okay. <laughs> but I am now. I feel like Queen Le Van Zandt. <laughs> Bro, you worked with that one all night. No, he no. couldn't wait. You couldn't wait. That you just said, "Well, when this, when this day, whatever." <laughs> <laughs> no, but real talk. Um, there was accountability mm-hmm. that I was not willing to do with a lot of the decisions that I made, with a lot of the things that I went through. Right. So I personally had to go to a therapist to see things in a different way Absolutely. and started. You know, but now I feel like I can, you know, I Same can help nation. everybody. Yeah. But you, you didn't go to therapy, but you've gotten through things. Like I said, you've gained that strength. Mm-hmm. You're able to share this. Um, and it's still a work. It's still a work every Absolutely. day. You know what I'm saying? Like, and like I said, if I do sit down with a therapist, I might Maybe. be able to help. Help them. We all, we <laughs> Look, I might be able to get them some pointers on how to do. Because you're gonna have them sitting on the couch. They're gonna be like, listen here, you done you done pull something out of because I'm so I'm so honest and transparent about my experience and my yeah. and my truth now. More not not to say that I wasn't before, I just wasn't open. Mm. Before I was a little close because I didn't I didn't know who to trust with my my truth and my yeah. heart. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I wore my heart on my sleeve actually, which is crazy how you kind of shield your heart, but you wear it. It's kind of like hard. I did both, but it was like I gave I wasn't good at placing it. So it's like the people I gave my heart to didn't deserve it. The ones who I didn't give it to did deserve it. Kind of thing. So it's like I had to learn how to have a better judging character. Mm. Um, and I feel like now I get it. Because it's like the people that I gave time to couldn't even sniff the same air as me now. Now, the <laughs> artists that you work with, mm-hmm. what is like from your years of experience in the industry, mm-hmm. what is something that you have to give to them? What is some advice that you always share with them as they're in their journey? Do not change. Hmm. I tell my artists all the time, what made me find you and connect to you is what you have to keep because if I see it, Mm. the rest of them won't see it. Mm. And that's something that I had to get to myself because 
my, I, have to, I have to always bring it back to me. What people saw in me was something that I didn't see in myself. Mm. People saw a star, but they also saw vulnerability that they can pry on. So that was the that was the energy. Ooh. It's like he's talented. Tell me these people look, look, look he's talented. He's talented, but I know he wants it so bad. So here we go. So it's like I missed out on the ability to be that star because there was another energy surfacing. There was a there was a he doesn't have a support system. He doesn't have a family. We can see that because he wants it so bad. If he wanted, if he if, if he was so talented, why is his family not helping him? Why are they not mm. pouring into him? Why is there no money being spent? Truth be told, though, that that's the story for a lot of people. But but that's a what I'm of... saying. But I I literally thrived off of that energy like that I need. I was very needy. I mm. wanted it so bad. Can you can you help me get a show? Can you da da da? Knowing I was talented enough that I was gonna kill the show when I got it. Mm-hmm. But if I didn't get it, it was like damn, I'm not talented no more. But the moment you offer me something else, like yeah, I can do this for you, is like you excited to help me, and then I still don't got the show. Mm. I it was just a lot for me. You know what I'm saying? So. I tell my artists to stay true to who you are and who you are is going to get you to where you need to be. And the things that you, that I had to go through, you don't have to because I went through it for you already. Mm-hmm. So that's, my, my artists know my story. And that's why we're so close and connected because they be like, yo, Jay go hard. When they're asleep, I'm still, I'm still working because that's what I wanted for myself. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I remember those days. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, oh, there ain't no such thing as sleep. My artists be like, Jay, well, I went in the studio. Da, da. Listen. When y'all wake up, here's here's John Cena, here's the agenda. Like I don't because I understand that the work is what needs to happen in order yeah. for us to win. We can't win because we just talented. it. We gotta work. So I just can't wait till my my uh, bank account reflects the movement. <laughs> I can't wait till this book comes out, man. Uh, no, oh Lord, I was about to say surviving the Jason, and it is not one of those. He is not one of those people. We're gonna say discovering the Jason. Oh, I'm gonna say we you ain't gonna survive me. Let him like, talk. Let him talk. The oh, story. You heard it here first. Listen, you not, not you knowing the name of the book, though. That's crazy. That's the name of the book. Shut up. We're mm-hmm. about to end this real quick so yeah. we can go ahead and we can talk about this a little yeah. more. But for people out there who um, have had the opportunity to listen to this conversation, um, if we were in an elevator and you had five seconds until we got up into that next floor, why should I listen to you? Why should I support you? Why should I care about you as a person? Because I'm the story that needs to be told, and I'm the story that's going to be honest, I'm the story that's going to be transparent, and I'm the story that don't give a fuck. That's why. F-U-Q. Mm-hmm. My thing is, there's a lot of people who have opportunities to tell the story and to be a certain kind of way, but because of the backlash and the things that he's, the, the stuff that happens after that, I can handle it because I've already been dealing with it. Yeah, I don't care about the backlash because the backlash is my reality already. People are afraid. People of shame. are already talking, so it's yeah. not let them talk. <laughs> okay. Available on all streaming platforms. Where right can now, they get okay. it? They can get it on all of uh, all platforms. Social media mm-hmm. website. Go on, go on, get Y'all it. Y'all follow tour. me. Follow me at the only in the JC on T H E E O N L Y N E J C I O N. Okay. You know I do this for real, right? Okay. Y'all was simple on that. And what else do you have coming up? Uh, Miss Pat sells it. Yes. Um, I have two signed artists right now dropping projects. Um, shout out to Black Brown, Barry Hankins, Barry Henderson, um, Aaliyah's uncle, signed two of my artists. Shout out to Reese for show and Milo Waiters. Um, I have Kayla Infinity. She's about to drop, and I have R and B. This month. Yeah, this month. Okay, that's the one you were trying to get. No, uh, Milo. Yes, Milo drops Friday. Ah, yeah. Okay. He drops his first single under Black Brown Friday. Wow. Yep. What's okay? Okay. Now look, we, we're gonna tell you about that. And Jay Z, I hit me up and was like, "Hey, I need my artist." He said, "No, I need." You. I said, "No, I need my artist." <laughs> right. Okay. Right. So and I respect to, it. to wrap up the year, like we we're wrapping it up, like we began it. Yeah. With, with vision, with purpose, with intention, with family. Because mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's been years yeah. at this point, and it's like no matter. What has gone on in each of our lives? Anytime we've gotten back around each other, it's always it the same. always feels like home. It's always the same. So, thing. and you, like I said, you've always been an amazing person to me. And like I said, I I realized that more as I got older. Like, wow, Q really, like, really was was my is my guy. You know what I'm saying? And I really appreciate you for putting me. Because if I if had it not been for you, I wouldn't be here. Like, you're the reason why I'm able to m- move the way that I move and just be the social light that I am. But Make it make sense. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people just be in a room. I'm in a room with purpose. <laughs> but you know what? And, and I appreciate that. But I also have to tell you that you wanting me to give you a chance, that was you giving me a chance to show I myself that. something I that know. I didn't know I was capable of doing. And because of that, 
I there was a confidence. There was, you know, we we do things, we accomplish things in life, but we don't sit in those moments and right. celebrate our own wins. Yeah. So because of that, I was able to do that over the years. So I appreciate you. And you know, look, twenty twenty four is about to be amazing. Man. Um, Ooh. I'm talking to JC out and friends. You might be talking to my secretary instead of me. Too. <laughs> well, I won't be calling. I'm, I, no, I'm, t- I'm telling I'm you. I'm joking. No, no, I'm telling he you. He has the direct contact, if, if anybody who I've known, who I am super cool with and, and I have with, a relationship with, imagine. if you ever send me to your secretary, just know we won't talk again. And I don't okay. need to talk to you. Like, it's not, it's and like, if you don't feel like you can answer my call, <laughs> Q won't be calling. The end. Right, and then we will end on that because that was good. So back to your secretary. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys so much for tuning in to another conversation on BOK Talk. Thank you guys for supporting the JCI and everything he's done. Thank you for supporting his artists. Make sure you guys go follow him on social media at the only only the JCI. And from there, you can see um, see everything that he's doing music wise. You can connect with all of his artists and everything that he has going on. And if you guys need an amazing makeup artist, you can also connect with Wifey. Beauty okay? by Desi on all platforms. There you go. Support the vision. Support the family. Um, once again, thank you guys for tuning in to Be Okay Talk. Happy 2023. And we'll see you again in 2024. Because guess what? 50 interviews in and we are done. Producer.